Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's devotional. We're talking about the parables of Jesus in this series. And so today we are looking in the book of Luke, chapter 7. And while you're turning there, I want to talk to you a little bit about debt. No, this is not Financial Peace University, uh, but it is relevant to our topic today. Uh, do you know how much debt people have in the United States? Can you guess? It is a lot of money. It's actually $14 trillion as of last year. $14 trillion. That's all of our credit card debt, student loans, medical bills, car notes, house notes combined. Uh, maybe you have some of that debt. Maybe you're still trying to pay off those student loans. Maybe uh, you had an unexpected illness or injury and the hospital is still you know, sending you bills every month. Or maybe you bought maybe a little bit too big of a car or too nice of a house and you're struggling to keep up with the payments. Debt is crushing. It always follows us. Uh, and today, Jesus actually is going to talk to us a little bit about debt and how that relates to our walk with the Lord. So read with me in Luke 7, starting in verse 41. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one, and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Hmm. Why did Jesus tell this story? Well, the context is he's at the home of a man named Simon, who's a Pharisee. Now, the Pharisees were a very strict sect of the Jewish people. They believed that if they practice enough self-control and did enough good deeds and right things and followed the law of Moses perfectly, then they would be closer to God. And so this man, Simon, has invited Jesus into his home. So they're uh, lying down at the table. In those days, you didn't sit at the table. You would lie down next to the table. It was only about six inches off the ground. So they're lying on pillows next to the table. When this woman comes in, and the Bible calls her a woman of ill repute. Uh, she had a, a certain reputation around town for immorality and loose living. She approaches the table, uh, and rather than disturb or get involved in anything that is going on at the table, she simply kneels down behind Jesus, and she begins to weep. And she weeps on his feet, and she washes his feet with her hair, and it's this really... I mean, I imagine a pretty awkward moment for everybody at the table as this woman is just boo-hooing over Jesus' feet. And so Simon the Pharisee thinks in his heart, ugh, if this guy Jesus was really a prophet, he would know what kind of person was touching him. And so Jesus tells the story in response to Simon's attitude towards this woman. And he asks, who do you think loved more, the person who was forgiven 500 pieces of silver or the person forgiven 50? Now, this piece of silver, uh, for our purposes, uh, was probably what they would have called a denarii, which is a day's wage. So 500 days wages versus 50 days wages. Now, of course, the obvious answer is the person who is forgiven 500 days wages is going to be more thankful and have more love and affection towards the one that did the forgiving versus the one who was only forgiven 50. Now, why did Jesus tell this story? Presumably, Simon didn't feel like he had a whole lot to ask forgiveness for. While he viewed this woman, this immoral lady, as someone who, man, she had huge things to ask forgiveness for. Lots of sin, lots of debt piled up, so to speak. And the Bible often talks about our sin in the context of debt, that we have a debt that we cannot pay back to God. And that puts us in a pretty bad situation. We can't pay what we owe. And so what do we do with that? We know that we owe God something because of what we've done, um, but we can't actually pay it. No amount of good deeds can make up for what we owe. Uh, or maybe we're like this Simon guy. Maybe we look at how we've lived our lives and we think, well, yeah, I owe a debt to God. I'm not perfect, but I don't owe nearly as much as this other person. I haven't been nearly as bad as them. There's people in the world who are way worse than me. 
It's pretty easy to do that. We look at our lives and we compare ourselves to somebody else and all of a sudden, man, we feel great about ourselves because, oh, well, I'm not that bad. But let's go back to the, the debt we were talking about before. When you get a letter in the mail from the credit card company or the insurance company and they say, you owe this much money, can you write on that letter, oh, I know I owe this much money, but I don't owe as much as my neighbor, so I'm good, and just send that back. Will they accept that? No, of course not. What your neighbor owes has no bearing on what you owe. And the same is true with us and the Lord. We can't compare ourselves to our neighbor or our parents or our co-workers and say, well, I might be bad, but I'm not as bad as them. Absolutely not. All of us owe a debt of sin that we can't pay. And there's no use in comparing ourselves to anybody else because all of us need forgiveness. We need the forgiveness that Jesus offers. In fact, even at the cross, the Bible says that as Jesus is dying, he shouts out, it is finished. Now, the Greek word there is tetelestai, tetelestai. It's a beautiful word. I love this word. Why? Because it's actually a financial word. In that time, you go pay your taxes, and once you were square with the government, the tax agent would write at the top of your receipt that word, tetelestai. You could translate it paid in full. When Jesus dies on the cross for you and for me, he says it's paid in full. They don't owe anything else. You need that. I need that because we can't pay it ourselves. It doesn't matter if we think we're better than someone else. We need forgiveness. And we can't be arrogant and say, oh, pff, I'm fine. I don't need that. I can keep going my own way. The only thing that we can do is just like this woman did. Fall at Jesus' feet and weep and praise and thank him because he has forgiven our debt, not by just erasing it, but by paying it himself on the cross. And I hope that you and I can live with that same level of gratitude, that same level of awareness of our deep abiding need to be forgiven by God. I'm so thankful that on the cross he said, to Tetelestai, paid in full. We love that word here. In fact, you can buy a t-shirt with that word on it in our cafe right now. Let's always remember how much we've been forgiven. No matter how we've lived our lives, we've fallen short of God's standard for us. But he loved us. He paid for us. And now we can live free and forgiven, just like this lady did. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have forgiven our debt. God, that we no longer owe anything but can live free. God, I pray for everyone watching this right now that they would, number one, God, ask for forgiveness of the sins that they have committed against you, and two, always be mindful of their need for forgiveness. God, let us never become arrogant. Let us never become so impressed by our own righteousness that we think we don't need you anymore. We don't need your forgiveness anymore. God, we need you. Help us to walk humbly, respectfully, and reverently because of what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.